everyone, I am so excited that you joined us today. Today we are learning about an exciting, amazing person named Joshua. Do you know that we learn about Joshua in the book of Numbers and Joshua in the Bible? Today I have an important truth for you. God is in every aspect of our lives. He uses our obedience to bring about the plans for our lives. But before we get there, let's meet Jesus in a time of praise and worship. But you help me see the world I view so differently I love I got you making a mess somebody was a friend or an enemy? Well, in today's story, Joshua did. He met a man that turned out to be a lot more than what he expected. In fact, he wasn't even a man. What? Have I got you curious? That's good. Let's go learn more. Hi everyone. So we've got quite an interesting story today from the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 6 talks about a city named Jericho. Do you know what happened there? I bet lots of you said yes. Well, the city of Jericho stood in the way of the Israelites coming into the promised land, the land that God had sworn to give them. So in order to take possession of the promised land, the Israelites were going to have to attack and defeat the city of Jericho. The problem was that at that time, many cities were surrounded by high, fortified walls, which were designed to keep them safe from invading armies. Jericho was a city like that, so the Israelites didn't know how they were going to come in and attack it. But one day, 
Joshua was walking in the evening near the city of Jericho, and he saw what he thought was a man with a sword in his hand. Joshua asked him, are you for us or for our enemies? Basically asking, whose side are you on? But the man answered, neither. I am the commander of the Lord's army. Well, that must have been quite scary for Joshua. He fell face down on the ground and said, I am at your command. What do you want your servant to do? Now the answer was kind of strange because it didn't involve attacking the city or climbing the walls. The Lord told the Israelites that they were going to walk and walk and walk some more. So Joshua went back to the Israelites and he led them to do what the Lord had said. They had to walk around the city of Jericho and they had to do it in total silence. That was on day one. Then on day two, they had to walk around the city again. And on day three and on day four. In fact, right up until day six, each day they walked around the city of Jericho in total silence. Now, if I was living in the city of Jericho, I would have thought that was kind of strange behavior. I probably would have laughed at the Israelites. Maybe I would have teased them. Maybe some people even threw things at them, like, I don't know, rotten fruit? But on the seventh day, the Israelites had to walk around the city of Jericho seven times. And on the seventh time, the priests had to blow trumpets and the people had to give a great shout. When they did that, the walls of Jericho came crashing down. It wasn't because of the people's shout. God was the one who had given those walls a big shake and sent them tumbling to the ground so that the Israelites could go in and attack the city. And God gave them victory that day. Now, I love this story because God's instructions to his people were clear and they were detailed and they were specific. He didn't just tell them, go and attack Jericho. He told them where they were gonna walk, when they were gonna do it, how they were gonna do it, and how many times to do it. And when they were obedient to him, then he gave them victory over the city. Now, even today, we have lots of instructions from God, and he gives them to us in his word, in the Bible. He gives us instructions about how we're gonna do things like our family life, our friendships, how are we going to act when we go out in public? How are we going to act at home behind closed doors? His instructions to us are detailed. They're specific. And you know what? God's instructions for his people always result in joy, in peace, and in health and wholeness for us and for our relationships. That's what God's plan is for his people. And we get to step into that plan when we choose to be obedient, just like Joshua did. So, we can say, like Joshua, God, I am your servant. I am at your command. What do you want your servant to do? Joshua's question is something we can ask God in our hearts every day. What do you want me to do? I'm ready. Or maybe today is the first day that you ask God, what do you want me to do? You see, just like God had a plan for Joshua to step in and take over the promised land, when we walk in obedience, we step into God's plan for our lives. Because do you know what? God's plans are way better than ours. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that you have a plan for each and every one of our lives. Thank you that you can teach us to be obedient so that we can step into these incredible plans that you have for us. Thank you for this wonderful message today. Amen. All right, guys, two more things before I go. Number one, if you loved this video just as much as I have, give it a big thumbs up, follow us, and turn on our post notifications so you never miss a video. Number two, if you notice next week, Sunday, there will be no video for the ages eight to 12. Do you wanna know why? Because for the next three weeks, if you're doing church at home, use this as a time to connect with your family and all join in together. And maybe afterwards you can sit down and you can have a chat about what stood out to you in the preach. Guys, I hope you have a fantastic week. See you soon. Bye.